All right, American girl, uh, we need to talk. We need to talk about your pattern of gross disrespect toward your most loyal fans and customers. I don't want to inflate my own ego too much here, but I do want to give myself some credit where it's due. I get a lot of messages from people telling me that I helped them get back into dolls, back into toy collecting, into playing with toys, and just overall embracing their nerdy hobbies, all of that. I've done a lot of good for the American Girl brand. As a cringe-ass social media influencer, I've done a decent amount to make matching with your doll look like a cool part of a trendy, alternative, artsy aesthetic. I had a 30th birthday brunch, which included other influencers at the American Girl store in 2022. I've given their books positive reviews. I've stood up for the company when it was the target of reactionary right-wing hate two years ago. And that's nothing to say for the amount of money my adult self has spent on their dolls, books, outfits, and more. And I have never been sponsored by them. I've never been given their stuff for free. None of that. This has all been done out of the love and passion that I have in my heart for this expansive 18-inch universe. Last December, I posted a three-hour deep dive on the American Girl Company about its history, its controversies. Uh, I reviewed a bunch of their books, kind of talked about all the things that they do. It's one of my better performing videos, and it's also one of the videos I'm proudest of. It's one of the videos I had the best time making. But ever since I've posted that deep dive, I've been noticing things getting worse at the American Girl Company from my perspective as a fan and a consumer. And some of those things are things that we seriously need to talk about here now today. Earlier this year, I interviewed the author Mel Hammond, who wrote the American Girl body image book, the one that got in trouble with conservatives because the book dared to mention that LGBTQ people exist and that there's nothing wrong with us. I was so happy to see a book like that existing, and I was happy to give Mel and her sister Tegan a place to discuss their new work, which, by the way, you should absolutely support. I'm going to link Mel's social media and that video in the description below. I didn't ask Mel about any official corporate responses to the backlash that she got, in part because I didn't want to ask any questions that might be too personal or might be something that's impacted by an NDA or anything like that. So what I'm about to say right now is pure speculation and has absolutely nothing to do with anything that I've ever heard from Mel or from anyone else at American Girl. But it seemed to me that Mel was getting a lot of harassment and I didn't see the American Girl company doing anything to defend her. Maybe they did something privately. Again, those questions were outside the bounds of what was appropriate for me to ask during that interview. But if you saw the interview, then you saw the levels of hate that Mel was getting from anti-LGBTQ people, all in this hate campaign spearheaded by Matt Walsh's wife, Alyssa. Whether American Girl supported her in any way behind the scenes, I will never know. But while their book was facing public backlash, and while Mel was being dragged through the mud and falsely branded as a danger to kids and some kind of like satanic influence and all of this crazy shit, American Girl did nothing publicly to defend her. And now, two years later, I can't find the book on their website anymore. The last couple times I went to the store, I looked through all of their book sections. I didn't see this book on the shelves. Did they pull it? What happened? So this was my first red flag, but a red flag is just a warning. I, I didn't form my final opinion on the company and their direction just yet. And honestly, looking back, maybe that was a mistake. I tend to give everyone the benefit of the doubt for far too long, and that could be because I interpret things very literally, but maybe in retrospect, I should have seen the lack of response on American Girl's part and their subsequent lack of promotion of this book for what it was, cowardice in the name of profit. So this pattern then continued, the pattern of selling out their original mission and their educational value in favor of making quick money, even if it alienates their core long-standing fans who have been here supporting them for decades. If you remember my deep dive video, you probably also know how annoyed I was with the launch of the 90s twins, Isabel and Nikki. American Girl released two dolls for the Y2K era, setting their story in 1999, but did not touch on a single social issue of that era. They put out two dolls to cover the turn of the century, yet they did not address Columbine and they did not address 9-11, which are arguably two of the most defining events for millennials who are growing up in America, which is the exact demographic that Nikki and Isabel were created to represent. Instead, all their book did was shout out their favorite 90s brands and 90s bands. And the fact that those dolls were not here to just represent the pop culture of the 90s as a decade, but were instead meant to represent the end of the 90s and the start of the 2000s, 
2000s means that that was their attempt at covering the Y2K era. Those are the dolls we have for that era. And it didn't address the big event that led to 25 years of normalized school gun violence or the other big event that sent the U.S. into war for two full decades. Events that both kids today and current millennials who those dolls were created to represent are still experiencing the fallout from and has impacted the ways we live our lives. It's a glaring issue to me. I'm still mad about it, but... Once again, I was willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Then, a few months ago, American Girl started this store-wide and site-wide rebrand, which I loved. I loved this rebrand. I think that the color schemes they went with, the font choices, everything about it reflected the classic American Girl, the Pleasant Company era style that we all connected with so much in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. To make things better, they then re-released the birthday outfits for Kirsten, Josefina, and Addie, along with re-releases of the original editions of their books. And I thought, okay, Maybe they were going for a rough spot, but in the end, I'm worried for nothing. This company is on the right track. They're back to educating kids about history, about supporting equality. Everything is going to be okay, right? The company, maybe they were going through some weird transitional periods, but they're back on track, right? But the stuff I saw happen during this past week has solidified for me that American Girl has been taking their customers and their community for granted, even going so far as to attack and hurt small business owners, the lifeblood of their fandom for the sake of their own profit. At least in my personal opinion, that's what's happening, okay? This entire video is all in my personal opinion. This is my personal reaction to what's happening. If you disagree, that is totally fine. Just this past Thursday, American Girl officially announced their 2025 Girl of the Year, a doll named Summer McKinney. Her name is Summer. I like to call her Midsummer because she's mid. <laughs> A lot of fans, myself included, were upset. Uh, for one, that she's not black, uh, because Girl of the Year is currently on its 24th doll of that series, and only one doll of all 24 of them has been black, and that doll is Gabriella, who was rushed out at the last minute and was overshadowed with the release of Tenny, a white girl who was clearly the doll they put more effort into and is speculated to have been the real Girl of the Year all along. Gabriella just had this, like, rush recycled collection of very poorly put together items and outfits and things like that. In the early leaks of Summer's promotional marketing, material, we saw a black girl, we saw illustrations of a little black girl, and a lot of people thought maybe Summer's going to be a black doll, but I guess that's supposed to be Summer's best friend that they've announced no plans to release a doll of, so we've got our millionth white girl of the year instead. So there's a few, just, just to be clear, and I'm going somewhere with this, okay? There are a few things that I like about Summer. I like seeing the Nenea face mold get more use. I I, li I think her blonde hair and her pink glasses combo, plus her like startup boss babe attitude that she has, that all combines together to remind me of Karen, Christie's little sister from the Babysitter's Club. I think that's pretty cool. I don't like how young she looks. I don't like how cheap and like poorly made and low quality her outfits look. From everything I've been hearing, companies are starting to market everything to younger demographics. Video games and iPads have made it so that many kids like to give up physical toys by the time they're eight years old or so. I think that's kind of sad because American Girl Dolls used to be for the eight to 12 year old market with more advanced books and higher quality dolls, better construction, more elaborate and higher quality costuming, which made sense at their expensive price points. But that's neither here nor there. I play video games too. I'm not a child. I'm part of the problem, I guess. I like that Summer is a doll who wants to run her own business. As I understand it, her story is about how she starts up her own business to bake her own doctor treats, which is adorable. Like Summer, I also run an animal-themed business. Forever Home Friends, linked in the description below. We produce picture books and plushies about rescue dogs and cats, and we give 10% of our profits to local animal shelters. Max the Vampire Kitty is a perfect book and plushie combo for the upcoming Halloween season, but that's enough about me. Let's get back to Summer. On the American Girl website, Summer refers to starting up a small business as, quote, her big idea which is interesting because remember how a minute ago I told you she reminded me of Karen from the Babysitter's Club? What's the first book in the Babysitter's Club series called? Oh, that's right. It's called Christy's Big Idea. And it's the book where Christy, Karen's older sister, first gets the idea to start up her own small business. Hi, editing savvy here. Quick update. So the first Babysitter's Club book is actually called Christy's Great Idea. So the wording is slightly different. So maybe that was a stretch for me to make that connection on my part. I'll let you decide. I I'm not sure really. Add that to the fact that later in the book series, Christy's sister Karen actually does start up her own pet-themed small business in addition. But that's honestly, that could just be a coincidence, okay? Just like how Nikki and Isabel looking that much like Mary-Kate Nashley is also probably a coincidence. I just think it's ironic 
that they're promoting a doll who starts a small business and she's heavily inspired by and somewhat referential to another existing property. When you listen to what I'm about to say, you'll see why it's so ironic, why it's perhaps hypocritical even. You know what sucks? That American girl created a little girl boss doll, talked about the importance of starting up a small business, tried to educate girls about how they can become entrepreneurs, but did it all for show. It's not genuine. American Girl, as a subset of the Mattel company, does not support small businesses. In fact, it has been targeting them and antagonizing them by copyright striking doll clothing and pattern makers on Etsy. This is part of a long running pattern of behavior from Mattel and American Girl of just nasty antagonistic behavior toward their adult fan base. And at this point, we need to talk about it, okay? This behavior is cruel, it's unacceptable, and then just days after attacking small businesses on Etsy, they turned around and announced their new girl of the year, who's going to be a small business owner. I hope Summer gets her little dog treat baking business copyright struck by PetSmart just so you guys know how it feels. All right, let's break down everything that happened. Uh, before I get too much deeper into this video, I do want to give a quick thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for supporting this channel. On my Patreon, you can find bonus videos, blog posts, behind the scenes things, all kinds of bonus content. So check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel and getting access to that kind of stuff. I'm currently in the process right now of working on this huge deep dive about the NaNoWriMo organization, all the controversies going on there, the downfall that's currently happening, and I'm putting that out at the end of the month. But I decided to put together an additional video for right now. I put this together quickly because I'm so angry about what I saw happening. But since doing this video and the NaNoWriMo video are both involving interviews, I've been feeling like a cute little journalist. So I had Kit hang out with me while I worked on these. Kit is also wearing a dress that I got from an independent crafter on Etsy, and I think she looks absolutely adorable. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, then you probably know how much I love and care about small businesses. I started up this channel in the first place to talk about my experience as an independent author and small business owner working with my company Forever Home Friends. A couple years ago, I released a book called Savvy Business Owner, where I talked about my process of starting up a small business with my advice for other entrepreneurs. And then last summer, I published a book called Conversations with My Puppet, which was all about how I like to play with toys as an adult and how that helps my creative process and that kind of thing. I actually shouted out American Girl in that book multiple times and included a few photos of their dolls in there. I sure hope they don't sue me for loving them so much. So that's just all to say that small business owners, especially independent writers, crafters, and artists are extremely important to me and crucial to what I do. I just recently dressed all of my dolls in their fall outfits and most of those outfits I got from Etsy shops and from craft fairs, often hand sewn by talented seamstresses and crafters. Many of these Etsy shops have helped keep the adult American girl fandom alive. And let's be clear, Adults who love toys are a demographic who is ready to drop serious cash at any moment. Kids do not have money and parents might have money, but most parents aren't going to be willing to invest thousands of dollars into toys that their kids might outgrow or kids might kids change their interests very often. So they, they probably don't want to invest the same huge chunks of money that adult toy collectors who have been invested in these communities for decades are willing to do. But American Girl doll stands in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, okay, we deserve some respect. A few years ago, I used to love watching Etsy crafters and independent artists modify American Girl dolls. They'd give them these funky hair colors, they'd do mermaid hair, they'd do fun on makeup, they do lash extensions, interesting face paint, all kinds of different colors, you name it. And then a few years ago, American Girl started releasing dolls with interesting hair colors as well. And then they started selling dolls with painted on lashes. I was a little annoyed at the time because it felt kind of like, okay, you guys are already the official company. We're all buying from you to begin with to get the dolls in the first place. Do you have to step on the crafters territory too? But it's their company. They can release whatever dolls they want. So I tried not to think too much of it. But then last week on Instagram, two prominent doll clothing seamstresses came forward to talk about their experiences having Mattel copyright strike their Etsy shops, causing their product listings to be taken down and threatening to have Etsy strikes, which could lead to the permanent termination of their shops. Those of you who are in the doll fandom or know me from there may have heard of Elizabeth of Pemberley Threads or of Patricia of 18 Cotton Lane. Both of these women create elaborate historical doll outfits and they use their Etsy shops to sell the sewing patterns that they develop. I will link both of their Instagrams below if you want to check them out. The clothes created by these shops are not in direct competition with American Girl's official doll clothing releases. As historical collections have grown smaller, fans have still wanted a 
variety of historically accurate costumes for their dolls. Pemberley Threads offers patterns for a variety of 18th and 19th century ball gowns, for example. Is American Girl selling an 1840s Jane Eyre style dress? No, they're not. They don't even have a doll from the 1840s. The closest thing they had, Marie Grace and Cecile from 1850s New Orleans, were retired a decade ago. But if you want to learn to make an 1840s style dress for your doll, Pemberley Threads has developed a pattern that you can use. Similarly, 18 Cotton Lane has patterns for dolls inspired by magazines from those eras, like their recent 1940s dress and skirt pattern combo, which was inspired by the cover of a 1944 issue of Life magazine. These things are cool as hell, and these are things that adult fans are foaming at the mouth for, okay? I spoke with both Patricia and Elizabeth about their experiences, and we're going to talk about everything that unfolded for each of them, and we'll talk about some of the social media backlash from fans along the way. So on Tuesday, September 10th, Patricia received the following email from Etsy. Hi, 18 Cotton Lane. This is Etsy's trust and safety team. We're committed to keeping Etsy a special destination for unique and creative goods. One important part of our ongoing work is helping sellers understand and follow our policies for selling on Etsy. Why we're reaching out? Mattel Inc. recently let us know that they believe some of your listings infringe their intellectual property. In line with our intellectual property policy, we've carefully reviewed their report and have removed these listings from our marketplace. This means they're not active anymore and won't be seen by buyers and you can't edit or relist them on Etsy. The email then included a link to the copyrighted material, which was the Jess mold. So basically they were mad that the product showed American Girl dolls wearing the clothes and showed those dolls' faces because they own the copyrights to the face molds. They showed the dolls modeling the clothing and Mattel was like, oh, those are our dolls. We own the rights to those dolls. So then Patricia blurred out the faces on some of the dolls, but left some of her other listings as is. But the fact that her shop wasn't the only one targeted continues to show this pattern of behavior. As you'll see, Patricia has never been someone who's wanted to compete with American Girl or take business away from them. In fact, until this incident happened, she was a huge supporter and promoter promoter of the brand who spent years working with them. I asked Patricia for her testimony and her first person experience of what happened and here is what she had to say. So just some background, I'm 66 next week. I worked in the American Girl Boutique at Chapters Bookstore, part of the Indigo Bookstore chain here in Ottawa, Canada for several years. In Canada, Indigo Books bought the right to sell American Girl and they opened boutique stores in select locations across Canada and were the exclusive purveyors of AG in Canada. I was trained by AG staff and I worked in the salon and on the sales floor. I was a very passionate, highly rated employee and booster for AG. Eventually, I was in charge of organizing AG events for the store, such as crafting sessions and birthday parties. I left when the pandemic started, and by that time, I was already sewing clothing for my own little collection of dolls. I became active on Instagram in the AGIG community, that's the American Girl Instagram, eventually building a present following of over 5,700 people, and friends began to request custom clothing from me. I opened 18 Cotton Lane in May 2019, initially just sewing clothing, and for the past year or two, offering sewing patterns as well. My shop vision statement is nostalgic apparel for 18-inch dolls, and that sums it up. I love at 1930s and 1940s fashion, and I do a lot of research for my patterns. Never being someone who approaches challenges in a half-assed fashion, I threw myself into it, and I learned pattern drafting, photography skills, how to use a graphics program, and more. People who have Kit, Ruthie, Molly, Emily, and Nenea are definitely looking for more clothing options for their dolls, which American Girl Brand is not offering. I now have 1,550 sales on Etsy through 18 Cotton Lane and all five-star reviews. I have not had a single problem with Etsy on either of my shops since 2019, and I found it a very smooth platform for selling. Yesterday, I was sitting in the locker room at my swim class and opened my email to find the letter that I forwarded to you. My 1940s pattern, Let's Make Lemonade, had been pulled from my Etsy shop in response response to a complaint by Mattel. I clicked on the links for more information and saw that it was about the Jess mold and surmised it had to do with a photo that I included in the listing for my pattern, Let's Make Lemonade. A tester had used a doll with the Jess mold when she photographed the test outfit she made with my pattern. The photo was in the listing and in the pattern itself. There was no option of just editing the photo out of the listing and pattern and reactivating the listing. That file cannot be uploaded again. So anyone who has purchased the pattern and needs to download it again cannot access the file. So initial reaction, shock nausea, 
fear. I don't make a huge income by any stretch from my Etsy shops, but it buys the groceries for my husband and I as we head into retirement. I was also surprised because Let's Make Lemonade has only sold maybe 50 copies or so, so it's not a huge seller and hasn't really made waves. I'm really a very small fish in the doll creator community. Then I got mad. I posted on Instagram and immediately found out that my friend Elizabeth at Pemberley Threads had two patterns removed yesterday for the same reason. We immediately took to a Facebook chat with some other creators and tried to figure out what was going on and what to do about it. I ended up taking the offending photo out of the pattern and created a new listing for the pattern that did not use the photo. I uploaded the file and so far so good, but all the reviews I had for the initial listing are now gone. I also erased the faces of the two cover girls on the pattern, not wanting Mattel to find any excuse to hit me again. You see, three strikes and they can close my shop with no notice. On September 12th, two days after this happened, Patricia posted an update on her Instagram announcing that she was going to move her shop away from Etsy and toward a different site for sewing patterns called Pixie Fair. I will put the Instagram captions and pictures up on the screen. And then right before I was about to film this video, Patricia sent me a screenshot of the DM exchange she had with the official American Girl brand Instagram. It reads as follows. Hello, Patricia. We treasure our American Girl community and their passion for the brand. Mattel and American Girl do not request external seller accounts be closed or suspended. The platform makes these decisions directly based on its policies and criteria. To which Patricia responded, The delisting of my pattern was absolutely done because of the Jess mold used in one of my photographs. It states that clearly in the documentation. The link to documentation led to the patent held by AG for the Jess mold. I can forward you the Etsy email with the link to the Jess mold patent declaration if you would like. At, at the very least, something behind the scenes is disorganized here, okay? Because the Etsy email that I showed you guys, the email and the link to the registered copyright shows clearly that Etsy took down the listing due to a DMCA from Mattel. Mattel, the company who owns American Girl. Etsy itself did not take these listings down out of nowhere. They did it because Mattel issued a DMCA to them. The other seamstress who spoke out about this was Elizabeth, owner of the shop Pemberley Threads. Here is what she had to say about the experience. On September 10th, Etsy informed me that two of my listings were removed for intellectual property violations. I began to panic because I had heard of this happening to other Etsy sellers. I then dove further into what happened. After talking to many people who have experienced this, I have reason to believe that Mattel is using a third party who uses AI to sweep the internet looking for their doll head faces and then files reports against these sellers. This is legally a gray area because they do have rights to these doll heads and their use. It just leaves me baffled because if designers like me cannot use their dolls to model our clothing, an entire community is going to crumble. These dolls have inspired countless talented artists. I personally know many people who bought their Yvette doll, for example, because of my photos of her dressed in historical clothing. I have received countless messages from followers reiterating this fact, that they bought one or several American Girl dolls because I inspired them to start sewing for these dolls. It seems some artists and their businesses have a warm, albeit ambiguous, handshake with Mattel and are quietly permitted to continue selling, and that's fortunate for them. But for a one-woman show like me, I'm not wasting my time in money fighting their claims because while it is a painful and callous reach, they are the copyright holders of the American Girl doll heads. If it can't be resolved, I'll be scrubbing American Girl dolls from my image and using other dolls or dress forms to model my clothing. It is truly a heartless move on their part as I have been a collector since I received my treasured Samantha doll at six years old. I remember combing through the catalogs when they would arrive and circling all the beautiful dresses and accessories I wanted Santa to bring me. I hope they make lots of sales from cutting off a woman-owned small business. What would Pleasant Roland think of this? This is not a good look for a brand that is supposed to be dedicated to giving girls the confidence to achieve their dreams. So Elizabeth has now also taken to blurring the faces in her product listings. Her dresses, you guys, they're so elaborate. They're so gorgeous. I wish I knew how to sew. I mean, I've sewn a few things here and there, but I wish I had this kind of sewing talent so that I could make things like this. Maybe I'll commission some uh, dresses from these, these shops. Now, now, to be clear, I am not a lawyer. I am not an expert on copyright or IP law. Mattel may very well have been legally entitled to do what they did. But just because something is legal doesn't mean it's beneficial. Toy collector communities are about the creatives, and even if Mattel is legally allowed to do this, it still hurts the community at large. It's insane to me that American Girl would go after the people who support their company, who create entire Instagrams to photograph and showcase these particular dolls. 
American Girl Instagram and Reddit were also not happy with these developments, to say the least. On September 10th, a post to the subreddit called What's the IGT saw a variety of fan reactions. Such ad 3888 said, AG try so hard to separate themselves from adult collectors until it's time to sell those $300 dolls. To which AwareC8593 replied, if that ain't the fucking truth. And Cyclops Pirate 64 said, thank you for saying the quiet part out loud. And this is a really good point, okay? As I mentioned, in my deep dive video at the end of last year, American Girl as a brand seems very confused as to who their target audience is. When they're selling their yearly collector special edition dolls for $300, which are more than twice the price of their regular dolls, they know that they're targeting their adult audience there, right? Like, I, I, I don't know all the parents in the world, but from the parents I do know, I think very few parents would be buying a $300 special edition collector's doll for a child. That's for the adult collectors. So they know they're targeting the adult audience there. When they're adding mimosas for brunch to the American Girl Store menu like I had at my 30th birthday, they know they're targeting adults there. But then when they do shit like this, they alienate the entire adult audience all at once. It's just absolutely ridiculous. User Marvelous Time had a similar experience. They said, they filed a takedown on one of my items, specifically citing that the violation was the use of a Jess doll head. But I didn't use Jess in my listing. I checked out Patricia Sears' Instagram post about about it and they cited the same violations to her and also to Pemberley Threads, which seems fishy, but I also know I don't have a legal leg to stand on here. To which Crafty Magic Dolls replied, unless you are advertising a product that's giving fa a false assumption, unless you are advertising a product that's giving the false assumption that you are affiliated with the brand, I don't see how any of this makes sense. Like if you were selling a mirror and you're wearing a Philadelphia Eagles t-shirt and you're standing in front of the mirror when you take the photo, the Philadelphia Eagles doesn't get to file a copyright claim because you're not selling a Philadelphia Eagles mirror. Similarly, if you stated in your listing for doll clothing that the item fits 18 inch dolls, such as American Girl, Journey Girls, etc., that's literally a descriptor. Nothing about that is screaming, I'm trying to trick people into making them think this is an honest to God American Girl branded item or that I'm in some way affiliated with American Girl. I know a lot of these DMCA takedowns and copyright things are handled by bots, but it definitely is a load of garbage that if you're using a doll as a model, unless you're selling dolls or claiming that the clothing is related to the brand somehow, like that's just bonkers. This would be like selling a car part and saying it fits a Ford Bronco. How the fuck are you going to sell an air filter for an 87 Ford Bronco without saying that it fits an 87 Ford Bronco? Unfortunately though, we're talking civil law. So until somebody is actually willing to put up the box and hire a lawyer and take this thing to court to make brands quit doing this and overstepping bounds like this, the best you can hope for is that you fight the complaint or take it down and that you ultimately win. But my favorite Reddit comment of all of this came from just a had who said, I'm definitely stunned considering Mattel is all about career Barbie and this isn't very career Barbie of them. On September 11th, a date that Nikki and Isabel do not recognize as historically significant, American Girls Instagram posted a video of Lila, the 2024 girl of the year, getting ready to welcome the new girl summer. But the comments of this post focused more on the controversies surrounding the Etsy shop strikes than it did on the new doll. Let's take a look at the top comments. Attacking small businesses on Etsy that literally have done nothing but support AG and provide free advertising for your brand is not very we celebrate girls of you, sickening. I've been a follower of the American Girl brand since 1998. I am upset and disappointed that AG has decided to go after small time hobbyists creating clothes for these dolls. There is clearly a market for talented seamstresses and if AG can't or won't fill it due to their clothing quality falling in recent years, it's not very girl power of y'all to make sure no one else can play either. Boycott AG until they stop harassing Etsy sellers. I've been a loyal fan since the early 90s, but this is enough. Looks like AG needs to be boycotted. I mean, besides this, we still haven't had a proper African American girl of the year and the fact that Claudie still doesn't get the love she deserves. So that's referring to the fact that their only black girl of the year was Gabriella, who was clearly rushed and was clearly repurposed from an existing doll. They didn't create a doll from scratch to be a black girl of the year. And a lot of people are very upset about that, myself included. I think some of the best comments though were the ones hidden by Instagram. Instagram hid these. Absolute shame on American Girl and Mattel for attacking small businesses on Etsy and shame on Etsy for letting your platform be flooded with wish items, but you bend to the will of a company that can't even sell on your platform. I'm gonna take my berry tiered ass to the secondary market this time around since I'm pro small business, hashtag shop small. There are a lot of reasons that this scares me as a small artist and small creator myself. Uh, first of all, a couple years ago, I started doing custom doll commissions. I don't do them as often anymore, but now I'm worried. Are they going to start 
coming after doll customizers? Is there going to be an issue there? Right now I have this new creative project that I've started working on in the background, which I'm not going to announce yet because like it's still an early thing, but it involves a lot of toy photography, especially of my American Girl dolls. Uh, toy photography is just one of my favorite hobbies in general, and I think we should be able to sell our photography as its own form of art. One of my favorite doll Instagrams is Five Hens and a Cockatiel, run by a woman named Sydney, who runs this Etsy shop making calendars filled with her doll photography. Her photography is just incredible. I have her 2024 calendar hanging up on my fridge, and if she makes a 2025 calendar, I'm gonna get that one as well. She's never been struck for anything as far as I know, but maybe that's because American Girl in the past has hired her to work on promotional photography for them. Honestly, that's awesome. I think she's great. Uh, but that's my point. It's just kind of inconsistent. And it's very inconsiderate. You guys know how strongly I am against plagiarism. I'm against stealing other people's ideas. I'm against stealing other people's work. But I'm also very in favor of the concept of transformative works. I'm in favor of people building on top of one another's work and being allowed to profit from the new thing that they created. Regardless of what the law says, I have always believed in the spirit behind protecting your intellectual property, but to me, the spirit of that is not about squashing other creatives from building on and transforming your work in their own way. It's about protecting them from people who want to straight up steal it. <laughs> Small businesses made up of seamstresses and photographers and other artists, those people are not stealing and directly ripping off someone else's work and trying to sell it, claiming that it is that other thing. They're using existing pieces of popular culture as a baseline, as a tool to then build upon and create something new and transformative. So I I'm just kind of fed up with American Girl as a company right now. Uh, I'm still gonna play with my dolls. I'm still gonna photograph them. Maybe I'll one day even sell a book filled with doll photography. And if they come after me, they come after me. I feel like honest creatives out in this world would have my back on that. But right now, I'm not too inspired to buy from them directly. I'm much more likely to support smaller crafters and the secondhand market. And this is such a shame because do you guys know what my favorite Sunday activity used to be? tripping balls at the American Girl Store. The American Girl Store Cafe is stoner heaven, okay? And so are both of the women's bathrooms. I've never been in the men's bathrooms, but I've heard that they're not as great. But anyway, I can't do that anymore. Now I'll have to spend my free time tripping balls at the Burlington Coat Factory surplus outlet in my neighborhood like a peasant. Anyway, I'm gonna keep buying from local crafters and going to craft fairs and shopping on Etsy, on eBay, and on other sites. If you're a small business owner who makes doll clothes or furniture or accessories, let me know because I'm in the process of getting a giant Ikea shelf to convert into a huge dollhouse that I'm going to use to line one of the walls of my home. So I am actively looking for stuff to fill it with. I was going to get Julie's groovy 1970s cigarette scented bathroom, but not now. So hit me up, friends. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. My big NaNoWriMo deep dive video will be ready by the end of the month. So stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys again then. But in the meantime, hey, Kit, what is it we normally say on this channel? Oh, that's right. Don't forget to support small businesses. Keep supporting small businesses. Bye!